Cobb doing his job too. They're on the board. Yeah, he got some healthy receivers back and made a lot of quick throws and, and had great field position early due to turnovers. After this Bears turnover, Rodgers finds Randall Cobb. Rodgers with two touchdown passes in 53 seconds. Packers were up 14 nothing, and then the bad weather came in, so there was a delay. Rodgers now looking to finish off the Bears. At, steps back, finds Jordy Nelson. He, he wide open, Teddy. Uh, did this have somebody move the coverage yet? The Bears needed to warm up some more, Coach. Okay, they were still in the locker room? Okay. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right. Mike Glennon, really rough night. Second and 14 at the Green Bay 29. Glennon and his center, communication issues. The ball snapped before Glennon is ready. The Packers jump on it. That's uh, bad football. Uh, Coaches look at that, look at, look like that, look at that, and say, "I just can't coach that." Oh, That's no, a no. big bear on Fox's that. chest, too, by the way. That bear so here, the, the pass gets away from Glennon into the arms of Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Glennon with one touchdown, two interceptions on the night. This was the big topic: the hit on Devontae Adams. Rodgers connects with Adams over the middle, but Danny Trevathan jars the ball loose with a vicious helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Now we know this now: Adams was taken off the field on a stretcher. He did give the thumbs up to the crowd, mm. but but guys, this is uh, this is pretty violent. Yeah, it really is, and um, the rule of thumb is uh, see what you hit, and obviously when you drop your head, you don't do that. Here's what they said. I regret, you know, just um, the level I hit him at. You know, I, I, I could have been a little bit better, but you got to understand, I was in the momentum, and I was just trying to make a play. And intentionally, you know, it, it happens in this game. Hopefully they see that, you know, the one intentionally just trying to make a play. I trust when Danny said that he wasn't intentionally trying to hit him like that. Uh, he is one of the hardest hitting players in the NFL. I don't think he was intentionally trying to hurt Tay, but uh, he did give him a good whack, and uh, unfortunately Tay got knocked out. Aaron, after the uh, hit on Devontae, it looked like you, I don't know, either took exception or you had something to say to some of the uh, Bears players. What was going on? I don't like anybody celebrating um, when a guy gets carted off the field. That's kind of the message I was conveying to them. What we thought was up was that he was celebrating that play. You know what I'm saying? Like you get your kicked, you know, you take a cheap shot, and you celebrate when a guy goes down. So that's what that's what really pissed us off. Here's the good news: Adams tweeted at 12:30 Eastern today, at home, feeling great. Appreciate mm. the prayers. All right, now. Coach, what's your take on the hit? Well, it's, it's not legal. Uh, it's a hit that obviously uh, brings attention, the bad intention to the game of football. We, we are trying to alleviate that hit. Uh, when you stop the game uh, in that sense, and when a player gets carted off the field, that's a bad image for football. We don't teach that. Uh, we don't coach it. The players intentionally don't try to do that. When it happens, we see this. It becomes a discussion of the day. Rather than talking about the game as a whole, we're talking about the hit, and we should be talking about the hit. We want to outlaw this from football forever. It's not legal. It's a foul. What they do to him, we do not know. He'll probably get fined and, and probably miss some games. And I would think, first of all, that the emotion of the defenders, once you, you see a hit and you see all that, yes, you, you get emotional that, oh, that was a good hit. But once they saw the result of it and they saw how uh, Devontae Adams was on the on the ground like that. I, I'm sure the celebration mm. stopped. I, I, I would hope the celebration would stop because they don't want him to be injured. But on the hit with Danny Trevathan, I, I understand what he's saying, Susie, in, ter in terms of the level he regrets. But he also needs to change his his tackling equation, if you will, because he leads with the head. And when you lead with the head, that's when you get into problems. Some lead with their shoulders, some tackle low. Trevathan leads with his head at times, so that's what needs to, be, needs to be changed first and foremost. A lot of players in the NFL still don't understand that. If you use the crown of the helmet, no matter if it would have been the head or neck area, all right, that is illegal. Yeah. That has to be taken out right. of the tackling equation. That's what needs to be fixed. Do I think it was a dirty hit? I do. But I do not think Danny Trevathan is a dirty player. I've admired his play ever since he was at the Denver Broncos. And right. he was leading that championship. That's exactly defense. right. That's exactly he is a right. great, great player. But on that point right there, that hit hope, hopefully would be avoided in the past in his, in his play. And that's why he said he will continue to defend his perspective on it. Yes. But he was contrite. And he yes, did he was. apologize he was. publicly. He was. And he said he will reach out to Adams and 
and also apologize privately. All right, let's bring Adam in now. So, Adam, what do you expect from the league on this? Susie, the league is already reviewing the hit for a suspension, and I think most people believe it's going to result in a one-game suspension because the league emphasized this rule during the spring and said that there could not be any helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits, head-on hits of a defenseless receiver. This fit right into that category. And on a Thursday night game where a lot of people are watching, the league is going to want to send a message that this type of hit, which parents are seeing, which fans are seeing is not going to be tolerated. I think that the league will wind up suspending Danny Trevathan. I think it'll be for one game. We'll see what the league decides to do, but it is already reviewing that hit, and it is also going to explore why the official did not eject Danny Trevathan on the spot, which probably should have happened. Now, on the other side, the Packers, they keep finding ways to win despite injuries. They came into the game without two starting tackles. Now, besides Adams, more injuries last night. Well, listen, they start with Ty Montgomery on the very first play of the game, fractures his ribs, goes out of the game, does not come back, and we don't know when he'll be back at this point in time. He's replaced by Jamal Williams, the rookie running back who goes down, hurts his knee. He had an MRI today. The MRI came back negative. There's no ligament damage at all. It's purely muscular at this point in time. Best case scenario on Jamal Williams. He might miss a game, might not. They'll have to see how he heals up during the course of the week. They don't know how long Montgomery will be out. And, of course, you mentioned Devontae Adams, who's now home from the hospital, suffering from that concussion. We'll see how long it takes him to get over that particular hit last night. And the big one. After the game, when John Fox was asked specifically about a potential change of quarterback, he said, we'll evaluate everything. Yeah. Right? A bunch of extra days here before they host Minnesota on Monday Night Football. What do you think this means for Mike Lennon? Susie, it is moving in that direction. It is moving in the direction of Mitchell Trubisky making his first NFL start on Monday Night Football a week from Monday. Look, they've been waiting for the right time. This affords Trubisky extra time to get ready. Glennon has turned over the football. Now, John Fox also said last night it really doesn't matter at quarterback because there are many issues that this offense has to address. Glennon came back and actually played fairly well, but they are so decimated on the offensive side of the football, missing Cameron Meredith, missing Kevin White, not having a lot of offensive firepower to begin with, that it will be difficult for any quarterback to excel. And if they do go to Trubisky a week from Monday night against the Vikings, it will be a tough spot for him because of the lack of offensive firepower that surrounds him on that side of the football. Right, and you mentioned turnovers. Glennon has eight turnovers in four games. So let's get the coach and player perspective on this. Mm. As the head coach, mm. how are you handling this? Putting you have some coach. time now. <laughs> you, you have time to reflect. You also have to understand uh, the mood of your football team. And when the quarterback seems to take energy away from your players because of his play, then it becomes a serious matter. And I think the matter has, has, has come upon this organization. Uh, when you think about how they want to play football, John Fox watched this last year. He watched this offense turn the ball over 31 times. Right now, they've turned it over 10 times. Quarterback has turned it over eight. The one thing when you bring in a veteran guy, you tell him this. Look, we're not asking you to win the games, but you can't lose them. Right mm -hmm. now, they're losing games yeah, because of the yeah. play of the quarterback. So yeah. there will probably be a change here um, after this uh, well, short vacation they have for 11 days. And I'll give you the perspective of all the defenders going up that are there looking forward to playing the <laughs> Chicago Bears coming up. Keep uh, not, in, yet. not yet. <laughs> Keep, Keep him in. One more week. <laughs> Keep him in a little bit longer. It's Monday night versus the Vikings. Is that what you said? Mm. Oh, the Viking defenders saying just one more game, Ooh. coach. Just leave him in for one more game because he, is, he looks bad. He looks bad. He's turning the ball over. He sits there in the pocket. He has a long looping release. He stands there. He's not mobile. He's making bad decisions. He's throwing the ball away. Okay. Trubisky could, in, could go in there and give them life, almost like Deshaun Watson did for the Houston Texans. It, watching them, it was a different offensive unit going up against New England. It's like, whoa, they now believe they have someone that can give them a glimmer of hope rather than a recycled quarterback now bringing, bringing to us again. He's just an old veteran now. I mean, he hasn't been in the league that long, but still, he's not doing the job. So let's move on to someone where we at least think that he can give us a, a glimmer of hope, and then your offense may have a little bit of a spark. Against the Vikes. Yeah, yes. well, that's but okay. That's kind of hey, scary. Hey, Sean Watson found, went up there and played the well, uh, England Patriots, right? Yeah, yeah. found Anthony Steven. Barr and Kendricks. I'm like, hey, just wait one more game, coach. Let me get me a couple sacks. <laughs> no, he's picks. okay.
<laughs> Pretty much. All right, on we go for, from one rivalry game to another. In fact, one of the best rivalries in the NFL heats up in Baltimore, where Ben Roethlisberger has had his struggles. He's lost five straight at the Ravens, the last Steelers quarterback to win in Baltimore, Charlie Batch. The Ravens have had recent issues of their own. Baltimore lost 44-7 in London to the Jags last week, a 37-point loss that's tied for the largest defeat in franchise history. They're happy to be home. The Ravens have won six straight games, but the Steelers haven't been bad away Who's from first? Heinz Field. They've won five of the last six road games, which leads us to our tape-off. Trey Wingo with the honors. Well, after a rough start to the season, he's on a winning streak, but a winning streak is nothing new to this player. He was a part of the Patriots team that put together an NFL record 21 straight wins over the 2003-2004 season. And oh, by the way, he also was part of that 2007 Patriots team that won every single regular season game they played. We're not going to talk about the Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who's also bowled a 300 once in his career, Teddy Bruschi. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Trey. As for the challenger this week, he may be down, but he is Never far out. from out because that smile Never keeps out. him winning and winning. <laughs> Remember, folks, in 2002, after a loss to the Browns, dropped his Jets to then 2-5, and five, he was asked, what are you playing for now that the season's over? He responded by saying, you play to win the game. And they went on to win <laughs> seven of their last nine games and clinched first place in the AFC East over the New England Patriots that year? That. Ladies and gentlemen, Herb Edwards. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. Are you guys ready? Yes. We are ready. Ready yes. for tape-off? Yes. Okay. Tape -off. Now, the only thing that can make this rivalry better yes. is that both teams are angry, and they're both coming off a loss. Yes. Or angry. Here's what the players had to say. Mm. The quarterback needs to play better. It seems like you really took last week personally. Why is that? Because I didn't play well enough to win. Um, I... I feel like we lost the game because of me, um, because I didn't play well enough. It's not on anyone else. Um, that's what, you know, that's how I felt. That's what you got to do is you got you to own it, and I'll own it because if I play better in that game, then I, I feel we win the game. And if I play better in the first two weeks, then we're going to score our points and we're going to have a more productive offense, and we don't have to answer questions about why our offense isn't where it is. I don't worry about my pressure, you know. I'm like Mike Gundy, man. I'm grown. I'm 45. You know what I mean? Um, nobody's making me do anything. You're not goading me into doing anything. You're not pressuring me into doing anything. I love what I do. When I step into a stadium, I'm there to do the job. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves when we all of a sudden start saying we haven't played well for three weeks. We played terribly last week. Uh, there's no way around that. Um, but the other two weeks, uh, we did what we had to do to win football games. And what do they have in store this week? Herm, you've got the Ravens. Well, they got this in store, and I got this with the Ravens. You think about the Baltimore Ravens. We talk about their defense, highly touted, very successful. But these are some numbers that are not very good. We think about the Ravens. They've given up six touchdown passes. Four of those, Teddy, have been to tight ends. Mm. Now, let me ask you about this fine dining that we have on the East Coast. In New England, if I went to New England, what are they known for? Give me a little clam chowder. Oh, clam chowder. Oh, clam chowder, something like that. Yes. Okay. Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. We say Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. We say crab cakes. Oh, crab cakes. And you have to catch the crab before you can have the crab cakes. I would think so, so let's look at yes. this defense. <laughs> let's look at what the problem is. Right now, if you ever see high hats, that means it's going to be a pass. So let's look at it. We're playing defense here. And all of a sudden, we see high hats. What does that mean? Pass. Pass. And what did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> to catch the crab first before you get the crab cakes. Now, we see the crab, but let's look. watch our eyes, Teddy. We're looking at the crab cakes. We have to catch the crab first. Touchdown. We got bad eyes, so guess what? Multiple tight ends again. Now they're in London. You know, guess what? We're going to see high hats. Let me see my high hats. High hats, what does that mean? Pass. 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 Okay. Pass. When I say pass, you want crab cakes. You got to catch the crab first. There's the crab. I'm guarding the crab. I almost have him in my basket. And guess what? I look at the crab cake again, Teddy. And we got another problem. And you know what? When the crab gets in the sand, that's a problem. Now we got dual tight ends. Oh, we got man. two of them on both sides. We're going to double crab? We got it. Look at it. We, we want a double crab, right? We got the safety runner down in the middle. Stay right there. We see high hats. What does that mean? Pass. Here comes the crab, Teddy. Running right at you. You can catch him. What am I looking at? A 
I'm looking at the crab cake again. <laughs> OK. This is a problem. And now he's in the sand, and you'll never get the crab. <laughs> You're going to, you, you, you never get the crab. You got problems. Yes. That's their problem, too. You got to catch them crabs first. They got okay. to catch the crab first. All right, yes. That made me hungry. It did, yes. You have. Yes, so. <laughs> We got the Pittsburgh Steelers. We do. And we know them, that high-powered offense. They're the killer bees, all right? They, they have all that high-powered offense. Ben Roethlisberger, Martavis Bryant, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown. But they haven't been the killer bees oh, for boy. some reason. For some reason, why? Ben Roethlisberger, throw that killer bee down to Martavis Bryant. Oh, there's a But what's been the problem? Spray that insecticide on that killer bee. They just can't. They can't oh, connect downfield. Okay. Ben Roethlisberger, Martavis Bryant, they can't connect downfield. Even you want to force it, the Chicago Bears, we're all over them. Throw that bee. Throw, Throw that bee. Throw that bee. Oh! Put that water on that thing. It's just not happening deep down the oh. field for Ben Roethlisberger and Martavis Bryant. Another killer bee right here. Pass rush, Ben Roethlisberger, Whoa. all you were to the Chicago Bears was a beehive. Honey bee. Beehive full of honey, go get that honey. And oh. all them bears, they smell that honey. <laughs> they go get that honey. That's all you were last week, Ben Roethlisberger. You got to get back to being the killer bee. And Mart and Le Le'Veon Bell, Hell, there you go. doing great. You jump up, you turn a killer bee, you do this against the Ravens. Oh, they got you. They gonna come and get you. The Ravens Them got you. Ravens know how to hunt bees, too. Not just like bears. So, you killer bees. Oh you got to get Martavis Bragg going down the field, and you got to get Le'Veon Bell going. Unless those killer bees show up, they're going to have a tough time versus those Four. Ravens, Susie. One killer bee was a little bit down this week. Martavis yeah. Bryant with a stomach bug, missed practice two mm. days, but says he's good to go and he'll be back. Well, you know why? Mm. You know why? <laughs> he caught a bad crab. <laughs> he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, yeah, he caught a bad crab. Yeah. He caught a bad crab. All right, now you he know, we need didn't you. We it. need you to vote. Teddy or Herm, vote ESPN NFL. Crabs or bees? So vote. I'm hungry. The vote yeah. coming later, but right now, pick this game. <laughs> I'll pick this game first, Susie. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens Ooh. because I don't think the Killer Bees can get it going against that Ravens defense. I think they bounce back. C.J. Mosley has a great game, makes some plays. Baltimore Ravens win this game. I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think Le'Veon Bell, it's just time for him now to be the guy we thought he was going to be. He was last year. They get this thing going. This is a hard-fought contest. There is no doubt about it. There is no love loss between these two teams. I've always said, people, if you watch this game, don't stand too close to the television because you might get hit. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of those games. I am picking Pittsburgh to win this game. Well, Le'Veon Bell does say that he is expecting a really big game, and, and we know. Yeah. We definitely do. All right, let's bring Adam back in. And Adam, most teams were making a statement, some sort of statement about unity during the national anthem last week, and perhaps no team made more headlines than the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the aftermath, they didn't appear to be on the same page. So what's the plan this week? That's the plan this week, Susie, to get on the same page, which they weren't last week. Last week, they had the team stay in the locker room while Alejandro Villanueva wandered out, while four coaches, including Mike Tomlin, also came out to stand for the anthem. There was a lot of discord, a lot of feelings that were hurt in and around the Pittsburgh organization in that city. This week, they came out and made it a point to say, that this team will be united. And I think we saw on Monday night the way that the Cowboys and Cardinals approached that game, kneeling before the anthem, then standing during the anthem. We saw Drew Brees announce the very same thing this morning in London, saying the Saints will do that very same thing. And I think that we're going to see something very similar from the Pittsburgh Steelers, who vow to say that they will do one thing, whatever that may be, together this Sunday against the Baltimore Ravens standing united. Right. The whole point, unity. All right. Thanks, Adam. Back to you shortly. Coming up on NFL Live, we're tracking all the big name injuries for week four. Our Stefania Bell has the latest on players like Kelvin Benjamin and Melvin Gordon. Plus, Jared Goff and the surprising Rams head to Dallas to take on Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. We'll tell you everything you need to know about that matchup on NFL Live. Game Picks is brought to you by the Can-Am Defender. Can-Am Defender. We're built for this.